I'm Katrina and this is So and Tear. Welcome to another garden tour. I haven't done very many of these. I had a winter garden tour. I was going to do a spring one. Completely got tied up in other things. So we have a midsummer garden tour. Welcome to the garden. I'm gonna start out here. I have two um, bojolas. That is uh, pineapple guava is the other name. We have some videos on those and you can eat the flowers of them. They are super, super good. The flower, the petals taste exactly like the fruit. And so if you're in a, a area that is uh, drought tolerant, they are wonderful. Below them is growing some bearded irises that I love. I haven't cut back the flower stalks yet. My favorite flower. And let's go in and see the inside. Um, the water in the front did get shut off, so we have not that great of growth, but they're doing okay. Water's back on and they are doing fine. So here we go. All right, let's go in and I'll show you what it's all about. Transfer you guys onto my little hand tripod and we'll show you everything. So like I said, these are the pineapple guavas. The flowers are spent and these are little pineapple guavas growing. They will be ripe in like Probably November, December, January. I'm not used to filming with a uh, handheld, so bear with me, it might be a little bumpy. So in the front here, I have this wonderful arch trellis here that I will be planting um, green beans on. I was going to do that earlier. Time got away from me, it just didn't happen. <laughs> so um, I have some, some tree collard here um, that reseeds every year. In fact, this one has already reseeded. You can see these are coming out and it's reseeding in the yard. So I love volunteers, volunteers love me. So that is what we like around here. Um, going over here, we have some uh, cherry trees. We have the um, Rainier, Bing, the self-fertile Bing, um, self-fertile uh, Stella. And then there is a uh, multi-graft one, you know, a fruit salad one. <laughs> And so those are here and right behind me in front of the house. If we turn around, I'll show you guys. Um, this here is meant as a kind of a meadow is what it's supposed to be, but it's mostly, it's mostly yarrow now <laughs> with some apricots, some self, you know, I just spit these apricots out and, and they grow. So there's apricots growing. These right here are, um, oh, we have tree collards. And then those right there are the narrow leaf milkweed. That's some native milkweed to help them out. The butterflies, hot lip sage, and that one started as a stick. And then this right here is Russian sage. And if you have bees or you want bees to visit your yard, this is excellent. Now here's some plants I don't water. I mean, this whole area is not watered either. Here's some plants I don't water right there. Some lemon balm. And this is actually hot and spicy oregano. It's in flower right now. i let it flower for the bees. Let's check out the other side of the front yard. So again, I am on, I'm on 7,000 square feet and that is not a lot of space. It's a regular in town space and 7,000 square feet. There's a lot going on. So, um, over here in front, we have uh, we have a multigraph tree, which is mostly apricot. It has one branch of, of um, late Santa Rosa plum and one branch of Alberta peach. So it's mostly an apricot at this point. So that's one thing. If you guys have multigrafted trees, make sure that they have the same or similar growth. Um, apricots just outgrow the peaches and the plums. So. In my opinion, I would not redo that. And also in my opinion, I would not put them in boxes like I have them now. <laughs> but this is what we're, this is how we're, we're doing it. Um, and then this right here is a baby Crawford. It's a small one. I grafted that onto a, a rootstock a couple years ago. It gives a few fruit every year. This ginormous monster, look at that. That is Flavor King Supreme, a Plua, and it's very, very tasty. However, I don't recommend growing it because it just does nothing after like three years. And I don't know why my camera is having 
focus problems. But anyway, it just does nothing after three years. It does wonderful fruit production before that point. Uh, this year I was going to overgraft it and it just didn't get to it. We had too much rain. I had too much other things going on. And so I didn't. And I ended up with two fruit way at the top. Um, and they were delicious, but it, it's gonna come out. So, um, this other side over here, I'm gonna go back on the sidewalk here. So from the sidewalk, you have more sages. This is another kind of sage, very pretty. The um, skippers especially like these. I don't see any right now, but they especially like these. More Russian sage. This is Anna's apple tree. It is an early apple. So it, these are not quite ripe, but they will be soon. Um, and they are super, super good. They're a Swedish apple that, not Swedish like from Sweden, but sweet as in kind of sweet. And they're very good. Um, now this here is archway and that has the um, passion fruit, which unfortunately I'm wondering if it passed away because of water, lack of water. Um, this area here is, is a, this area here is a jungle. It was a whole bunch of things and it's become a whole bunch of other things. Uh, lavender is good. There's some morning glory back there that's come over from the neighbor. And um, those are over ground cherries. I'll show you those. And then these crepe myrtles, we dug out and they have come up from the roots. But let's show you inside here. So I do have pots along, this is the driveway. I don't use as a driveway. And there's a potato in there. Um, various things in these pots. Some of them don't have any of it. Actually, a lot of them don't have any. But this is a ground cherry. Um, and these came, they're little lanterns. These actually came up, volunteered in the yard. And um, when they volunteered, I was like, what the heck is that? I didn't plant that. What is it? So those ground cherries. Um, I didn't know what they were. They were um, in the store and we got them. And you know, golden berries is what they're called in the store. You can call them Cape Gooseberries, you call them ground cherries, whatever you want to call them, it's fine. Um, but they were terrible. And they're not meant to be picked and then like shipped. They're meant to be picked when ripe, which is actually when they pick themselves and fall on the ground or when they come off in your hand. And, um, that's the better way. <laughs> so, um, the worms planted these for me. <laughs> I put out the worm compost and um, or the worm castings and they started growing. All right, let me get through here. Look at the trash cans here, sorry. All right, this right, this right here, it's a wolfberry. It's native to, um, see the little tiny flowers? Um, it's related to the goji berries, so it tastes very much like a goji berry. It has a little, small, little red berry, and it's super good. And back there, I don't know if you can see it. That one right back there, that one's called a bullion bush. It smells like um, bullion, like chicken bullion, and it tastes good. It's used in soups. So here we have some green stalks. Um, this one has seeds in it still, and then this is mostly, this one's mostly basil. Um, and basil, I'll just show you on here, because we are here and it needs to be done, but I need to come back and do it to the rest of them. Um, to prune basil, you want to go down, here, you want to go down to where there, you want to go down to where there's a split, and pinch it off. And then this is the part you eat, and then this just becomes more bushy. So you can do that on every area here. I just dropped that um, and that becomes a bit more bushy now we could have done it down here if we want it shorter eh, we can do it and you can do this with your thumbnail or you can do it with um, little trimmers so like this one you can go all the way down here wherever it splits like those two right there those will grow into new branches and basically what you're basically what you're doing is you're going to make it bushier by by doing this and there you go so i'm gonna do that with a lot of these but i'm not gonna do it on this video because that would take a long time uh, especially when i'm holding a camera 
So, um, here's the other side of that, of that box that has the Flavor King. Um, this one right here is the um, Elephant Heart Pluot, and that's really, really good. Um, and then this is, I don't remember if that's Flavor, that's Flavor Supreme, not Flavor King. So Flavor Supreme, and then Flavor King is over here. Flavor King is the one that's still going. So this box is, is well, it has stuff on it, but uh, that has several trees in it. And I would not do it that way again, but that's how I did it. There's some leeks growing there, volunteer. And so that's basically the front yard. Um, I will kind of walk through and show you guys. We have this bed here that has like, I planted nasturtiums and then it has this purple flower that I keep trying to get rid of. The bees like it. But um, yeah, so let's take you to the back and show you what's in there. Oh, I have to show you this. I have to show you this. This is my ridiculous volunteer tomato that has been growing for three years. Now everything, it did frost, it got down 22 degrees, but it's, it's protected you know, by the house. And it's just growing. It has flowers, it had flowers last year. So maybe it will have actual fruit this time, I don't know. Oh, guys, and this, this, it's gonna flower, but this is Chinese chive or a garlic chive, and that is super garlicky and super yummy. We're gonna have to start having some cooking videos with that because that is delicious. So again, here's our cherries in front of the house. And then um, this place here, I, I haven't had the water on because I haven't had things planted. This part here we dug down along the side and we put some, some rubberized, we painted some rubberized stuff on the, on the stucco which goes down into the ground so that we could actually water this without it getting into the side. So we have a carrot that's going to make us some seeds right here. Um, and then we have some sunchokes. This is left over from a couple years ago when I planted sunchokes. Um, also drew some artichoke is the other name. More carrot here. And then there's some radishes I planted and then I forgot about because <laughs> I forgot I planted them. So they are making us some seed. This side yard is just a mess right now. Um, this is called pigeon pea. So this is a nitrogen fixer. It's good for a lot of things. It's a lot of permaculture people use it. And then you can eat the, the beans um, that are in there. You can eat those or let them plant more. But you can see there's a good, some good beans on that. And again, I need to turn on the water if I want them to do better, but looks like they're doing pretty good. All right, this was my grandma's, and so I, I took that when she, when she passed and was on the, the garden gate. All right, we go inside, and I have these some archway set up. It's a little, it's a little cramped back here because we have so many things growing right now. Um, so yeah, so many things growing right now. That's what you see when you come in. And this is an active backyard, so you're gonna see things like wheelbarrows and other things like that. So this is comfrey we're coming up to. I still have not um, made my tea this year of comfrey. I do that every year. Um, and this right here, um, I got from my parents. My parents have a lilac, um, and so I got one of their lilacs and it's growing. Pretty cool. We also have a pear. So this is, I believe this is Warren. I'm Warren and Kami's pears, and um, that's doing really well. Oh, I, I guess that was the pear. This is the, um, where is it? Anyway, there's two things in there. This is Bear's Bridges, and I don't, I don't need that, but it's here. Um, so again, everything is growing, growing, growing. All right, so I'm gonna have cuts in here because I'm not used to having a camera and having it all over the place. But um, I have some archways here that will be holding things. So this little guy, I was training up. It looks like you decided to go the wrong way. So we're gonna, we're gonna redirect there. And uh, hopefully you'll grow up and over that. We have a couple of these. So these actually planted themselves. Um, 
they didn't plant themselves. So I did not plant any of these things in here this year except for that down there, which is a spinach. Um, these I planted two years ago. So I don't remember what kind of squash I planted. I don't remember if it was a variety or if it was just one, but there's one right there. It is climbing into the apricot tree. <laughs> but I'm just gonna kind of hopefully have these guys grow over this archway. So you can see, I'll show you the other, the other side of this. So it's growing up into the apricot, which is not really what I wanted to do, but we can, we can unwind it later. So this bed, um, I got this neat little book stand a while ago for free off the side of the road. Um, and I was thinking that it would be great to grow melons and they just set there, right? And you can just grow melons. I planted melons several times in this spot and they do not like the spot. So I either need to move the spot or change that. Um, but this right here is a plant that came with the house. It wasn't here. It was way over in the corner. But this is violet, which is medicinal. So it has made its way over here and over here. <laughs> And that is a volunteer grape that is choosing to grow up that way. And then this is dragon fruit. Um, I've never had fruit that actually comes to fruit here from flower. When I got this one from a friend, it already had some pollinated, um, two, two pollinated flowers. And this is still on here. I should probably take it off, but this was over one of the flowers this winter. Um, I was trying to protect it, but this is a white dragon fruit. I don't know what kind that one is. And then there's one on the far end that is a red dragon fruit. And um, it's kind of not the right place to grow them. So I learned, you can see they're crispy on the, on the tops. Uh, they don't like it when it frosts. So yeah, I haven't done that well. <laughs> uh, but this goes into the pond and um, lining this, you can't see it right now, but right here, all along there, and actually in the front walkway as well, and all along there, I grow saffron. Now I did film some video for saffron and I haven't finished it yet, so that will be coming out in the next couple weeks, I would imagine. And um, saffron is awesome. If you live anywhere um, in the Mediterranean climate, or you can do it in pots even, grow saffron. Um, it's a two to three week crop and rest of the time it looks like this. <laughs> so, so there you go. Um, I'll give you a peek of the pond this direction. So it has way too many plants in it right now, but there's a nice little pond. That horsetail you see over there, this right here, the raccoons pushed in. So it's like four feet deep on this side and then like there's a shelf on that side. It was on the shelf and the raccoons pushed in. So it's very tall now. So this uh, winter I did not prune and that was a mistake and you should learn from my, my mistakes. <laughs> um, this is desert gold peach um, and it tr produced a tremendous amount of peaches this year. We canned, we canned over 30 quarts. We freeze dried some and we ate a bunch and the animals ate a bunch. So if you want peaches that are early, desert gold is good. It is susceptible to peach, uh, peach leaf curl and it, um, it's not like the tasty tastiest peach. It's a good peach. It's, it's a good, um, I mean, it's good quality, but it's not like, oh my gosh, I have to have that variety. Uh, it is like a month earlier than the rest though. So there's some points. <laughs> So, um, you can see we have aloe here and there, and um, I don't think I've done a video on aloe yet. Uh, you, can, you can actually store it in the refrigerator, so like if you have sunburn or just want to use it, then it's all good. And wow, it is time to pick green beans. We picked green beans a few days ago, and um, we, already have, we already have several here that that need picking again, so I'll have to do that maybe tonight. Maybe tomorrow, but maybe tonight. Um, so here's the other side of the pond, and kind of give a, I have that plank on there. I don't remember what the main purpose was, what was but the, the possums actually used that to go across it, which is kind of cool. 
Um, I originally got these grasses. They um, aren't supposed to seed and you know go crazy. I usually I got those originally because we had some uh, tadpoles that were in here, and they became frogs, and then they haven't been back in a few years. So I think the kitty cat probably ate them. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you look, this right there is the is the. Um, desert gold and then this right here is the bonita and that is right there those are two peach varieties I know all you're seeing is green is that green and then this right here again I didn't prune and you should prune and I will be summer, summer pruning these um, this is a nectar peach it's a it's a, a white peach it's super super good but you can see it's being held up by a fortress. <laughs> Those are the peaches in the backyard. What I do is I take um, the seasonality and say, okay, I want an early peach, a mid peach, and a late peach. And that's the idea behind it. Honestly, these two were at grocery outlet for $6. And this one right here, this one behind me, this one that gives tons and tons of fruit and yummy, 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 was $15.88 on an ugly plant sale. So, go to your ugly plant sales at your local nursery. Um, they're usually older trees that they need to get rid of before they put the younger ones in. Ours happens in October, um, the one that I, the place that I go to. And so, yeah, just go to your ugly plant, ugly plant sales, and you will nurse it back to health. And if you don't, it was fifteen eighty eight. <laughs> so that's this one, um, and they're great. They're wonderful. So let me show you the other side here. Kind of go underneath here. Chickens are wanting attention. Chickens are always want attention. So yeah, so we're we're in underneath that peach tree still. More peaches. This is still the uh, nectar peach. And then um, here's the difference. These two, this is desert gold. That's bonita. They were in the same. Planted the same day, um, same uh, nursery, and one is much more huge than the other. There you go. I do I do need to cut back these um, peach peach branches that broke because it was under the weight. Because underneath this one is an avocado. Um, this avocado is not necessarily in the right place, and I've never gotten fruit because it is always being shaded out by this ginormous peach tree <laughs> so don't do that don't do that um and again that is a page mandarin right here i need to again this branch broke so i need to cut that off but it's doing great it has a few fruit from last year and then it's doing really well and has a lot of fruit to give this year and those will be ripe in the winter so we've come full circle around the around the pond let me go back to where I was <laughs> so I can show you all these things. All right, we are at the pear tree. And all right, so there's a the pear tree. And then this is a golden tears. Now this tree is not edible. It doesn't have anything edible on it. It is, um, has purple flowers and uh, like a golden little fruit that is not edible. And the reason why I keep this is the um, lesser goldfinches love it. Uh, I let the sticks, you can see the sticks are bare here. Um, they usually have little twigs coming off more like, more like this one. And what the, the lesser goldfinches do is they come and they take these off. So this happens after the frost, right? It frosts, it dies back and it comes back again. But the lesser goldfinches, they will take these off and they'll go off and they'll make nests with them. So um, all of these bare branches here, could I, could I turn it back now? Yes, I could. <laughs> Time. Yeah, don't have it. But um, well, all these bare branches, that's showing you how many birds came here to get the twigs. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, this, <laughs> this right here is, is an apricot and that's not the next one. But um, here's, I have a more park. I have a more park and a um, Blenheim in the back. I believe the branch in the front was a um, Blenheim, I think. 
but they are good. They had a good bumper crop last year. So apricots, if you don't already know, apricots will have like one good year and then the next year they'll kind of almost take a year off. There'll be um, a boom year and, and a year that's not as plentiful. Um, that's this. And then I do have another pear tree here. Um, it does have pears. So this is, I believe this is Kamis. One of them's Kamis and the other one is Warren. Um, this one I think had fire blight last year. He cut that off and it's doing well this year. So I'm hoping that it works. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, like I said, here's, a, here's one of the apricots. Um, now for apricots, put that down. For, apricot, for apricots, um, they are, apricots and cherries you prune in the summer. And the reason for that is if you don't prune them, um, if you prune them in the winter, where I am, um, if you prune them in the winter, then any moisture that gets in, they become susceptible to disease. So you wanna prune those in the summer. Now we're going to summer prune basically everything. Um, and that's okay, if you prune peaches and then they have time to grow more branches, you'll still get fruit um, the next year. So it's good. Um, yeah, and then this is Parmesan's peeing. I'm gonna wait till he's done peeing. <laughs> Are you done, sweetie? Yeah? He's shedding right now. So I do have, um, I do have rabbits. This is the daddy rabbit. He is shedding. And we're gonna we're gonna say hi to the animals in a different video, I think. But I'll just show you him right now. Um, and then here is the other um, apricot. It's doing really well. And then this right here is a sad, sad story. A very sad story it is. So that tree back there was a Snow Queen nectarine. And Snow Queen Nectarine is so tasty. It's so, so good. However, it's good when it's good. And when it's not, it's not. Um, it does really poorly most years. It, it, uh, gets really, it gets really small. It doesn't ripen all the way. It gets fruit flies or whatever. Um, it doesn't do well all the time. So when it's delicious, it's really delicious. But it's... On, on the size of land I have, 7,000 square feet, it's not worth keeping the tree. <laughs> so I overgrafted this year with Silk Road Nectarine, which if you have not had that one, oh my goodness, it's the best one out there. <laughs> um, it's, it's honestly, Silk Road is the best nectarine variety. Now, it's not the best for storing because it does not store. You wanna know what you're gonna do with it, but it is amazing. So I did overgraft it, grafts did take, and then they died. So that, that's part of what happens sometimes when you graft. Um, I don't know what exactly went wrong this time because I've been successful at most grafts that I've done, um, and I know they took, so I'm not sure what happened, but there you go. So what's next to that? So next to that is a Japanese paper plant, our old window frames, <laughs> which we, we use for various things here. Um, and I've tried to cut that back several times. It will not die. Um, anybody want it? You come dug it up. And then this is a lilac uh, that was here at the property. It doesn't smell very much, which is kind of not satisfying. All right, so you've seen around the pond and we can show you quickly in here. Just say hi quick. Hi girls. So we have three chickens. It's hot, huh? It's hot. So I do this rack and style house, rock, rack and house style, and there's three chickens, and there was two rabbits. We just lost one, unfortunately, but there's one over there with two or two babies. Um, yeah, the rabbit that we lost, we lost um, in childbirth. So we have eight little mouths to feed. Um, feed and grow them up. So that's, that's where my time's going. <laughs> um, anyway, that is around the pond. And then over here we have some beds. I'll just turn you guys around. And this is where the tomatoes are this year. I'm planted heat tolerant tomatoes. I haven't gotten a ripe yet, yet, but they are doing good. They're looking really good. They have flowers and look. 
we have green tomatoes. So, soon. Soon we will have tomatoes. <laughs> All right, I'll show you the next bed. Um, over here we have mostly green beans. So again, I have two trellises. One goes up this way, and then one is an arch. Again, going for that vertical growing. And I also planted cucumbers. I don't know why the planted cucumbers didn't come up, but there is a cucumber right there. I don't know if you can see it. That's a store-bought one, and I planted those. That's doing good. And just for some added space, I have along here the screen and porch, more stuff. This right here is a crookneck uh, squash. This is a willow that planted itself. All right, guys, how the heck does a willow plant itself? A willow plants itself when I brought in wood chips and there you go. It, when you water a wood chip and it has the willow and it has the growing part, you can get a willow. So it wants to live there, I'm letting it live there. I like doing that, by the way. By the way, all this stuff behind me here, these are beets, and you'll see a lot of these. Um, I let them volunteer, and then I eat the beet greens, and then I let them seed, and whatever comes up is the next generation. I have not planted beets for eating for a very long time. I did plant them along the side of the house, um, but other than that, in the backyard, I have not planted them in years. Um, I just let them go seed, and whoever wants to grow can grow. Usually they grow in the wood chips and they don't actually choose a spot that is watered, so, and they grow fine. So, that is what all of that is about. Um, over here we have, um, this is a sweet potato bed, I know you can't tell that, but there's also this volunteer squash um, from last year that had seeds. It looks like one's ready over there. I think it's a hybrid. Um, of the zucchini and the crookneck, but um, I'm doing pretty good. These are these are sweet potato leaves. You can eat the leaves. Yeah, if you'd like to see how I cook the leaves, I have a video um, about all about that. So um, I don't know how many I'm going to link up in this in this video, and how many I'm just going to say I have a video on. Um, but yeah, I do have a video on that, so that is good, and they're tasty and yummy. Check it out. Um, and then over here I have cattle panel hanging from the, the top here. That green bean needs to come down. <laughs> but we have green beans and again need to pick. It's kind of funny, some of them are short and some of them are tall, not sure why. And we have another beet going right there. In this pot here we have peppermint. I need to cut it back before it actually seeds. But this is peppermint. Always plant mint in a container that it can't get out of. <laughs> Experience talking here. Um, and then over here is another comfrey. And so I need to do stuff with that. It, it did get kind of shocked with the heat that we had. We did have some good, some pretty good heat. We have a blueberry grape over here. There's also a grape over here, but I think it, oh, there it is. It's just not doing anything. It's a little tiny grape in there. Um, yeah, grapes don't like it here. Uh, and then this is lemon verbena. I also have one over there, but this is doing really well. If you like the smell of like lemon drop candy, that is exactly what this smells like. So you just go like this and then it smells so wonderful. So good. Um, all right, so those are some of the beds. There's well, there's garlic in that bed, but it's, it's a nest. So those are those beds. Let me walk back. And I think it's going to shut off on me here pretty soon. Um, I have some more green stalks here. These are my original green stalks. This is strawberries, and this is mostly peppers with some other things. And I like them. And they're great. And I have a discount code. It's not a code. It's $10 off. Um, link in the description, and you should get it. This is another tower one that is a little bit more difficult to garden. As you can see, it didn't, doesn't quite get all the water it needs. But hey, vertical gardening is where it's at. All right, here's blackberries. I don't think there's any blackberry. Oh, there is one. I was thinking that there wasn't any ripe, but that one's ripe. So here's a little blackberry. This is a volunteer one. Um, fun fact, when you buy thornless blackberries and they make babies 
their babies have thorns. I have this cattle panel here that I'm supposed to be weaving it back and forth through, but it has gotten a little rambunctious. And we have some more that are coming on their way. There are four planted types. Look how big this one is, guys. Look at this. Like, let me put my hand here so you can see how big this is. That's blackberry. Oh my gosh. So I believe the varieties I have here are boysenberry, olalaberry, triple crown, and black satin. I think those are the four ones that I have here. Um, I did have dewberry over here, over on the other one. And that works. So what is this, right? What the heck is that? That's a weird structure. That used to be a clothesline. All of this used to be a clothesline. Now it is my... All right, my other camera got too hot, so I don't have my flip-up screen anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, so these are citrus. This is clementine. Back there is um, Valencia, but I let the Valencia rootstock grow because Valencia is sucked. Um, this is Mignola tangerine. This one was a $4 tree, $4 from Grocery Outlet. And then back there is a Wari Satsuma. It's very small. So like I said, I don't have my flip up camera right now because it got too hot, but that is a citrus grove. This right here is Caracara. That is Travoya orange. Um, we used to have a bear's lime and never fruited for us and it died this last summer, like summer ago. Um, Meyer lemon, and then this Meyer lemon was here when we, when I came, when I, when I bought the house. And so there's the citrus grove. Pretty cool. I'll go up this side and come back the other side. How about that? Um, morning glory is invading. I have not had time to, um, eradicate that. That comes over from the neighbor. Um, here's where we have quail and rabbits. I'll give you guys a sneak peek in there. Hi guys. While you're cooling off, yeah, you're cooling off. They dig holes. They dig holes to cool off. They have a sandbox. Ooh, that one's dust bathing in the chips. Hi, curls. Two more bunnies in there. Those are our future breeders. They are going to be breeding this fall, and they're super, super sweet. So that's good. Um, this is a quince. I have never gotten fruit off of it. The the um, the squirrels always steal it. So yeah. All right. Let's zoom in over here. I'm not gonna tra go traipsing through this jungle yet. Well, maybe I will. There's a fig that's ripe up there. So we have Texas Everbearing fig, Fuji apple, brown turkey fig, and tiger panache. And then there is. Um, there's some other stuff in the ground down there, but it's okay. Um, this is a ginormous, ginormous culinary sage. It just took over this year. Um, and if you guys saw the video, I don't know when it was, last week, week before, by the time this comes out. Um, there's a bee. This is winter savory. And it's super, super yummy. And that is golden currant. And these are asparagus. Now asparagus, you can see... Asparagus is supposed to go out to there, it doesn't, but it goes out to here. We have some flowers that just finished. Flowers that are opening up. And this is what they look like when they fern. Now here is um, the spearmint. <laughs> I made the mistake of planting spearmint in the ground next to a bed. Yeah, next to a bed. It's not next to a bed. It got in the bed. So my strawberry bed is now a spearmint bed. Um, but the bees love it and I need to cut it back before it seeds. Um, but all of this used to be a strawberry bed, which is why I got the green stalks for the strawberries. And then that right there is marjoram. It's in flower. Sometimes I cut it, sometimes I leave it because look at how much, look at how many bees are on there. I mean, the bees just love marjoram flowers. It's so awesome. So awesome. Um, yeah, so they, they just love marjoram flowers. It's, it's awesome. Um, and then going here, we have another bed here. Um, this is a narrow bed. I used to have ginger and uh, turmeric in it, and I left it over winter. <laughs> Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Most of it rots. I think there might be a couple turmeric still in there. 
Um, but this is largely just kind of experimental and, and volunteer beds. So I did plant, this is French sorrel, and then I did plant these. This is echinacea or purple coneflower. Um, and these trellises just are permanent here. They used to be here for, um, I planted melon over here. But all of these fig trees, they are all from cuttings. Um, I went on vacation one time and I didn't have anybody to water and so I just stuck it in where there was water. And um, they've been growing for a couple years now and they are just booming here. I think it's just, it's just gonna be the fig area. <laughs> I wasn't going to leave them there but I don't really wanna dig them up now. So welcome to the fig area. Now, a lot of you know me um, first from my main quail aviary video and um, this is the main quail aviary. We have um, Coturnix quail is what we have in both of the ravi. I call that the raviary over there. This is the main aviary and uh, we have the uh, they're both Coturnix quail and here are Egyptian fees. The other one is Jumbo Wild. So I'll just I'll give you guys a peek in here. Um, they do really well. Hi guys. Hello. And if you're looking for a good feeder for quail or chicken or anything, I, this is for quail. I made this. This is the ultimate quill feeder, no waste, and there's a video on instructing how to do that as well. And they do not make any waste. And if you have quail, you know that they are very wasteful for their food if they don't have the right eating container. So we'll leave those guys around. So I think that was most of it. I, I thought there was a mulberry in here too, but it might be hiding. Let's see if I can find it. But there's lots of little fig trees in here. Um, no, so anyway, that's, that's pretty much the garden. Um, we have lots and lots of fruit. Uh, there's a lot of trees and I'm actually going to sit and talk to you guys for just a few minutes. But first I have to show you these strawberries. So again, um, this is a green stalk and look at that. You can spin it, it's good. I'm gonna eat this. All right guys, if you're not growing your own strawberries, you're missing out. Like, look how red that is. It's so red. There's no white in the inside, it's sweet. It's a little tart. It's really good. It smells wonderful. Grow your own strawberries. Mm. So there's also a story about these two um, bushes these are hot lip sage. Most of the flowers are gone right now, but um, that's what the flowers look like. That's what the flowers look like when they were mature. Or not mature, when it's hot out, they get lips. And before then, they are all red. And they turn with the season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little garden tour. Hopefully I got everything. I probably missed something. If you're, if you're a fall, if you are a subscriber, let me know what I missed. <laughs> um, and let me know what I should plant. And I know that I can plant more things. Like this is 7,000 square feet. You can grow a lot of food in 7,000 square feet. I'm in town. Uh, it's a regular size lot. There's a house and garage and screen and porch on it. Like that's not 7,000 square feet of growing area. I need to actually figure that out. I think I said that last video. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for watching. I, you can do what I'm doing. Uh, it's, I mean, like I said, my best producers are those two $6 peach trees and that one um, Mineola Tangelo that was $4. I think my um, the Fuji was $4. This other peach tree was $15.88. The Anna apple was $15.88. Like you guys can find good fruit trees for cheap. Um, another way to do that is to learn how to graft and get some um, root stocks and you can graft onto that. Or if you don't like your trees in your on your property but they're healthy, you can graft onto them. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour. Um, like I said, I probably missed something. Uh, you can do a lot. I'm doing a lot. There's still room to do more. So you can always find more places to grow. And yeah, a little encouragement for you guys out there. 
Thank you for watching and enjoy the day.